welcome back to my channel. Um, warm, warm welcomes to all those new subscribers. Um, if you like what you see and you're interested in all the videos that I upload, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and that way you will never miss a video. Today's video is slightly different. So as you can see, completely different um, setting, which is unusual because I don't very often sit over this side of the room when I'm talking to you. But today that is where we're gonna be. I've had so many questions regarding the stand that I use and the frames that I use. Um, obviously you've seen the frames in previous videos. A lot of people have asked me about the stand that I use, so I thought I would do a little demonstration of my needle needs um, stand that goes with the frames. Now there is a couple of videos or a couple of video reviews on this stand um, out on Floss Tube. However, the ones that I've found so far are not the ones um, for the new version of. There are some slight changes to the newest um, needle knee stand. I had the old one, absolutely loved it. If you are interested in seeing the review on the old one, um, if you go to um, Hands Across the Sea, I'll put the description down below and I'll put a link to her channel there, where she does a review of the stand and explains how you use it with the old version. Um, this one is the newer version of the two, um, so there are, like I say, there are some slight modifications and changes to how it works and how you use it. Um, but I thought, since there's so many people have asked me questions about my stand um, and how what I use, I thought, why not just show you? So it's a bit of a show and tell what I use, but also as a review, because I find this like the best stand ever. I've tried various different options. And this is my go-to. But like I say, it depends on what your setup is. It depends on how you stitch, what you use to stitch with. You know, if you're using big Manelian frames or quantum frames, this is the sort of stand that I think works best. Um, that's not to say that there aren't others out there that can do the same job, but they're slightly different. This is my go-to preference. Um, Unless, of course, I'm working with a Q-snap or a hoop, in which case I might slightly change. But most of the time, when I'm sitting in my stitchy spot um, and I'm just settling down to do stitching, this is my go-to. I don't really have anything else that I use unless I'm stitching with a Q-snap where I'm just balancing it on the arm of the sofa. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to whiz us around. Um, and show you the stand in a bit Okay, more so because I don't have anyone here to help me with this, um, this is the best way that I can, I can show you, um, because there's no one to hold the camera. So this is the stand in question. Um, so let me just hold it up for you. So as you can see, it's two straight bars along the bottom with a bar that goes across the feet, a column that comes up, which is all adjustable, some more adjustments at the top here. Let me just take some stuff off. And here is the front section. So this is what it looks like. So when this turns up, it's super easy to put together. Super easy. Now you'll notice that at the bottom here, I have this. Now obviously this doesn't come with the stand. Um, my husband, let me squeeze forwards, there we go, so that's what that is. So basically it's an extension cable with two sockets on it that is zip tied to the frame for me and then that is how I have my iPad attached and anything else that needs to be plugged in which is super great when you go to a stitching retreat or you know you don't want cables running across the floor it literally just plugs into the back of the stand. So I find that perfect for me. Um, so obviously, as you can see, it comes with arms at the front, um, which are adjustable, and all this section is also adjustable. So it's really easy to put together. When it turns up, it's all sort of in separate pieces. You have the instructions, it comes with this little Allen key that sits in a, a little leather attacher. 
that's what you use to sort of tighten everything up and screw everything together and it is literally just as a demonstration stick that into the little allen key screws and you give it a tighten i tend to do this periodically every couple of months anyway just to make sure everything's tightened back up and then it goes back into its little holder which is underneath there I don't know if you can see it can you see where is it under there see that there let me move the scissors shall we so just there that's where it is and that's where it lives that is really all you need for this stand so let me squeeze you in a little closer and we can look at the main portions and sections of the you know the need to knows okay so there's various ways to set the stand up once it's actually all together um like i said the this sec this sort of second generation um needle need stand is different the only difference i have to say the only difference is this section here that is different to the original one okay um so obviously you've got down here you've got an adjuster which you literally unscrew and rescrew and that moves the middle column up and down to get you your height that you need um, so as you can see here you literally it lifts up and down it's super light you get it to the height you want it and then you tighten the screw like so when you get to this section and you're putting this section together you'll notice that there's two lots of holders or two lots of screws this is for this section this one here basically is what clamps the two the, the lock together but obviously you'd need to loosen that slightly you wouldn't but you would if you know what i mean i always loosen this one to get it nice and loose to where i want it um, and then obviously the beauty between this one and the last one that they did was the last one had like a, a little clip that you clipped in and it only had three settings. So you could only have it flat, slightly tipped or really tipped. It was fine. It worked perfectly enough because the adjustment that you needed to adjust if, if the tilt in itself wasn't enough was to change the angling or the height of the main bar to go up and down and then you could set your tilt this one however i think is fabulously made so so much better because you can have the stand at the height exactly the height you want obviously i balance my ipad on top of this when i'm doing my stitching because obviously i work from uh, digital patterns um so obviously the height of the stand is important this is the deal breaker is that you literally lift this to the angle that suits where you sit so depending on where you sit which i will demonstrate shortly on the sofa um depending on how you sit or you know because your stitching should come to you not you go to the stitching for positioning and as you can see you just tighten this little screw up and it stays where you want it if you like it to be slightly higher but not really high it gives you the flexibility to have the stand at what ang whatever angle suits you for whatever chair you happen to be sitting in. Now, obviously for some sofas, you can't get the feet underneath the sofa because it's got shortish legs. They do do little extenders that attach to this to slide it further under, if that helps for, for anybody. I don't need them. I tend to find this works perfectly well for me. Um, now, the, the thing that is really super great, I think, from the people that created these, you've got these arms, which is where your stitching, stitching sits. So these move, and you can just, I keep mine not, not loose. They're not loose, but they're not, they're not tight either. And then you put your, oh, she says, and then you put your stitching on there. So obviously, if you're looking to move your stitching and you need to move it up, if you want to move it down, 
I always tend to put my stands like this at the end of the day when I finish working on them. So that that way when people come in and they're like, oh, what's that monstrosity that's by her sofa? They can see what it is. And I can see what it is. So it sort of almost like displays your project. I mean, I have covers that go over the top, but when it's just sort of sitting, it's a great place to just, it's not big and bulky. So I obviously, because my house is quite minimal, I don't like a lot of stuff hanging around. Big frames would be no good for me because I like things to sort of slot away nicely. This does exactly that. It's really, really small and compact in comparison to a lot of the stands that I've seen. Um, so the beauty of this stand as well um, is that depending on where you sit with your, you know, what your setup is, sometimes you'll need bigger arms. So when you first get the stand, you don't get these arms. So let me just unscrew. Okay. So this is your arms that you get. But these are the arms that actually come with it, which are the shorter arms, which are perfectly fine But as you can see, they are shorter. So if you've got something that's rather deep and you try and put that on there, like so, you can't because it's, it's not actually on. But if you've got the small side stretchers, but if you've got the shorter stretchers of the arms, it fits perfectly. So you only get the short version arms, I think. I'll double check this before I actually put anything up um, you only get the short the short arms with it so you may need to order the longer arms for the stand I thought do you know what I like the short and the long so I'll, you know I'll interchange them I never do I've got to be honest with you because once the long ones are on one it allows for my stitching to come much much closer to me onto the sofa which I'll demonstrate shortly. Put this back on. Super easy to change. Everything on this stand is like, it's not gonna take you ages to set the thing up. It's that quick. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the long arms on, which allows it to come in closer to me on the sofa. I honestly thought that I would switch arms out as and when I needed to. I don't. I use the big arms for anything that's small or anything that's big. So, Obviously, I've put Andromeda on rather large side stretches. In fact, I will put here what side, side stretches, what size side stretches these are. And they're not the biggest, but they're not far off. And as you can see, my stitching fits perfectly on there. And I haven't even put it on the frame properly. There's a good inch and a half unraveled on, on the frame here, on this bit, to tighten, to, to get the tension. So. And there's still a gap at the top here. See? But equally, if I'm working on something that's, this, you know, on the smaller side stretches, there's more gap here, but that doesn't make any difference because I'm only actually interested in what's going on in this section anyway. Um, and because obviously I like it quite close to me on the sofa, the longer arms work better. So I've, I've never actually switched out my arms, I've got to be honest, on this project. So there you go, that is the stand. Like I say, it comes with great instructions, very, very easy to put together. It also comes with little, like little hooks, so that you can hook your equipment on. Like you saw, I had my scissors and let's just grab my... So for me, I always have at least one or two pairs of scissors hanging from there because they're just so handy to, to have there and never lose. And obviously for things like my hanks of skein or, you know, anything like that, I just stick them on the side. And then that way they don't get all, you know, I, everything that I need is around me. So let me just get onto the sofa and readjust the camera and I can show you how this works 
when you're actually sitting on the sofa with it. Hello again. <laughs> as if by magic, I'm on the sofa. So as you can see, we're now sitting on the, so on the sofa. Um, I'm going to basically give you a little demonstration of the difference between the little arms and the long arms. Because a lot of people sort of, you know, whenever you sort of talking to people about their frames, it's like, well, you know, the frame's great, but because of my sofa setup, I can't get my stitching close enough to me. So they're sort of reaching for their reaching for their stitching rather than the other way around. So the idea is is that your stitching comes to you. You should be set in your position of whatever's the most comfortable so that you don't end up hurting yourself or giving yourself shoulder and neck problems. So where's my hole gone? So as you can see, just while I'm talking to you, it's really, really easy to, to just change these arms out. What did I do with that washer? There he is. So we stick him through there. Stick that through there, a little washer on the top. And a little screwy thing on the top of that. She says if she doesn't drop it. Okay. So this is the small arms. She says. And as you can see, if I bring this, I just literally slide it with my feet. I've got a solid floor, but you can slide it on carpet. I've tied it, I've tested it, I've got a rug. So the same thing applies. So as you can see, I always put a nice little cushion behind me so that I'm nice and comfortable. And that is as close as my stand will get because of the sofa. The sofa sort of is the dictator as to how far in my stitching can come. Now, if I get a project like so, and put that there, that's fine, but I too tend to find that I end up leaning over my stitching rather than allowing my stitching to come to me because this is as close as it can get. So it's fine if you're on a chair where your stitching can come very close. Um, but like I said, the other problem you've got with the shorter arms is if you happen to have... Um, I mean, obviously, this is, this is the shortest the shortest side stretchers that they do. Um, Fudge just decided he wants to join me. I don't want him to stand on my stitching. <laughs> um, and I've got them sort of quite open because I literally just threw this on, on the frame to show you this. So if we move him out of the way and we was to get a project with the next size up, which again, I'll put the link here of what, what size this is. If I put that on there, it doesn't fit. If you can see here, the stitching is, is actually on the screws at the top. So unless you know that you're only going to be using the smaller side stretchers at all times, the smaller arms aren't necessarily going to work with the stands. No matter how small you make the top ones, they're never going to fit onto there. So, like I said to you, I always use the bigger arms for that reason. Because that way you can move the stand in and out to suit your needs. But you don't need to keep you don't need to keep changing the the arms. How many times am I going to drop that pair of scissors, huh? So you just love a good demonstration. So these are the sorts of things that actually happen. Okay, so let's... What fudge? What do you want, my love? I know you want to sit with mummy. He's a little upset because there's something in his way and he can't come and get close enough to mummy until mummy moves the things. Okay, so we'll screw that back up. Fudge. Wait. Come on then, get close. 
close to mummy. That's what he wanted to do. This is, this is my stitching buddy. He has to be super close to his mummy when we're stitching. So as you can see, now that I've put those arms on, when I sit here like this and I'm sat right back, my, the end of the arms is almost to my tummy. So if I now tighten those just marginally, and if I get my biggest project, well obviously it's not my biggest project, now you can see that this is very close. So now when I'm stitching, I don't, I'm not leaning towards my stitching. My stitching is, is right here. And it makes no difference whether I'm working on something that's on the bigger stretches or on the smaller stretches. My stitching is just as close. They do wiggle in and out. So as you can see underneath, underneath your project, so if you're trying to work on a certain section and this little arm seems to be in the way, you just, you just pull them out. That's the beauty of having them on these little tighteners. So you can have them tight. I tend to just have them nice and loose so that I can wiggle those around to my, to my preference. So if I want them right out to the sides, I can have them right out to the side, which gives me all of the width of my fabric at the bottom to be able to stitch. Same goes with my smaller project. If I put that there, again, it's right here. It's super close. It's plenty of space here, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you've got space up there. What does matter to me is, for my setup, I work with an iPad, which I then mark off. As you can see, I sort of balance it. It sort of sits in its, in its case, and it sort of balances on this back section, like so. And then I will use my stylus to mark everything off. And I can plug my iPad in while it's in situ. And I can move my frame carefully, of course. It's not, you know, it's not actually stuck to it. But I can move my frame in and out. I can get in and out. The iPad is secure there. My stitching is close enough. I don't have to stoop or bend. I can just sit in situ. My stitching comes to me rather than me going to the stitching. I think this is the best stand for me. Um, everyone has a different requirement, a different setup, depending on you know where they sit and stitch. For me personally, this is this is perfect because the other thing is my seat is one of the ones that the, the bottom flips out, and I do like to sit with my stitching. You know with my feet up now this is the beauty now it doesn't come straight in because obviously the end of the sofa sticks up but what I can do if I can do this whilst you're on camera without moving it I can put the feet up on my sofa and still bring my stitching in super close like so so sometimes if I want to put my feet up and because it's all very, very close. Now, I've dropped down because the feet of the chair has come up. But that doesn't, that doesn't make it so that I'm still st I'm stooping. The only thing I do do is I tend to find that I have to move my frame along so that I'm, I'm not leaning to the right. Because it is slightly coming in to the right. But I can still stitch with my feet up, with my stand, slightly off-centred to the right to me. And as long as I move my stitching along, I'm still sort of central. I'm slightly leaning, but if I want my feet up, I can still put my feet up. That's the beauty of this stand. Let me put that down. But if I don't want to put my feet up, Fudge likes it when I put my feet up because he gets to land right out like a big lion next to me. Um, but if I'm not putting my feet up, then it comes directly in. So it is personal preference. I love this stand. I love the frames. I'm not gonna lie, there are a lot of people that have had a lot of problems with the shipping and the time that it takes to get this stand and to get the frames. You know, I'm not, I would say that, you know, I personally haven't had any problem with the service. But I do know a lot of people where I've heard other, um, other stories. 
my only thing that I would say is even if I knew that this was going to take six months a year to ship knowing what I know if I didn't have it in the first place you're not missing something you've never had so therefore it's up where well, you can wait as long as you can wait the only the only the only thing that I would say is obviously people um don't like the fact that they're made to pay up front and then they're waiting and waiting and waiting but for me if I was going to funnel the money into this frame and stand then I'm going to do that anyway regardless of how long it takes to get to me but I'm afraid yes there is a very very long waiting list for these it's a very very long wait for them but if you're already using something and it's working and it's just a case of you just going to sort of you know pay for it and you just sit and wait for it inevitably um for six months a year then I personally, I do, you know, I don't care how long it's going to take me to get either the new stand if I need one or some more frames if I need them. I just place the order. I've got frames that I can be, I can be working with. The beauty of this stand is you could also use the quantum frames, which you can get from Omanique. Um, because they're very similar to these, you could use those frames on this stand without a problem. And just as a demonstration, so I don't, I don't like all that whole, a lot of the frames that you, you tend to have, um, the stands are connected to the, to the frame. So, you know, I mean, like a Larry stand, you have to undo something to, to flip it. With this, you don't. You literally do that. That's it. Do the work on the back. Flip it back over. That's the small one. Same again with the big one. I get the big one and I'm working on my lovely Andromeda flip it over to get to the back flip it over it's it's just so you know everyone has a different way that they like to stitch and how they you know have whether they you know like to finish on the front or finish on the back if you're the sort of person that does like to get to the back of your work um, and flip it it doesn't get any easier than this. I mean, I used to use the Lowry stand when I first started stitching, and it just annoyed me. One, because it came in from the side, so sometimes I couldn't get it over enough. Um, and two, you had to undo something to flip it. I used to tend to find that it wobbled around a lot. This doesn't. This is just, you know, it's, it's solid. There's a slight amount of wiggle, but it's not a wiggle as in a wiggle. It's purely because probably it's on a hardwood floor. But love this stand. So there you go. You wanted to know what it was that I stitched on, what I used. This is my baby. This is the newest model. I'm not sure whether they do the old version and the new version. I will, I will, I will put a link here. I'll do a bit of research to check for you as to whether they do that. Um, in which case you could get one or other. But I think this now is like the, the, the revised modern version. Um, so I think whenever you order one of, the, one of the stands now, this is the stand that you'll get with the two, the two adjusters and not the clip that flips in and out. Um, like I say, there's another demonstration on Floss Tube. I will put the link here and in the description box below so that you can head off and go and see, I think it's Hands Across the Sea, um, where she does the demonstration of the older version with the little clip, which she uses her foot to sort of clip it in. This is the newer version with the newer model. And as you can see, I can move it out of the way. It's, it's really light. If I need to get up, I just move it out of the way and off I go. That's what I like about it. It's not heavy. It's very easy to move around. When I go to my stitching retreats, I take my stand with me. Um, I don't dismantle it. I literally just drop the, the centre bar down to make it shorter, lay it down flat, and off I go. So it's, it's I, can tr I can travel around with it if I'm going somewhere, obviously. Not if you're actually travelling, but if you're if you're just going to a stitching retreat or you're going to a friend's house for a weekend, and they're a stitcher, you could take this frame with you in the car. It's it's not that big, so there we go. So that is the stand that I use with the frames that I use. Um, 
I am tempted to try the quantum frames just so I can get a comparison for myself, but to be honest, because I've got a full set of, of scrolls and, and, and stretcher bars um, of all the different frames that go with my stand, I don't really feel the need to get any more. But that's not to say that I won't, just to sort of see what the comparison is, whether they are equally as good. But there you go. So that is my setup, my stand. Um, and obviously you can see me in my stitching spot. So I need, now need to go and do some stitching. I hope this review has been helpful um, and to give you an idea of how the stand works. Um, so until next time, people. Bye-bye for now.